butter or margarine? Which one should you choose, Dr. It's, a, it's like a battle. Mm -hmm. Battle of the spreads? Battle of the butter-like spreads. <laughs> All right. I'm Dr. Paul Zalzo. I'm Dr. Brad Weening. Welcome to Talking with Doc. So we're going to talk about kind of what butter is, what margarine is, how they're different, and how you make a choice about which one is the best choice for you. Stick yeah. around to then. Leave a comment if you have a thought about butter or margarine. And I genuinely struggle with this, or did until we did a deep dive into it. About anyway. what was better? About, yeah. Oh, but what do you like better? Uh, like better? Like what do you t like the taste of better? Like if you just went on taste, you said, I don't care about the health stuff. Mm. Here's what I want. I'm at the movies. Yeah. Yeah. I feel you know like what? for you. I, I, honestly, no, I honestly oh. like them both. Yeah. I feel like margins have come a long way. Yeah. Yeah. They yeah. weren't that odd yellow. Remember when we were like kind of growing no, up? Yeah. They were of, weird back then. Yeah. And they didn't taste really very good. But you have to I talk think about modern margarine. Yes. Mo modern margarine. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so what's butter? So butter is uh, a dairy product. Yes, it is. Where it comes from animals. Yes, yeah, so where it is churned mm -hmm. to make it thick, and that's what leads to butter. So it's primarily... We, we did that in Pioneer Village in grade school. You made butter? Yeah, we churned nice. whatever you churned, the, the cream, yeah, turned it cream. into butter. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I remember that. I was in like grade five or something. Look at you, you little butter maker. Yeah, yeah it was, you've been to Pioneer Village? Yeah. It's not far from where you live. It's pretty it's really you neat. You probably yeah. live on Pioneer the, Village. Yeah. So. yeah, oh, by the outhouse and the butter churn and the, <laughs> yeah. the cotton gin. That's it, Mabel. You yeah. nailed it. So, so you make butter, and butter's mostly saturated fat, with a little bit of water and some fat-soluble vitamins in there, and that's what people have used historically as spreads, used it in cooking and baking and, and whatnot. And you can tell it's a solid at room temperature, right. which is what's giving you that indication that it is a saturated fat. Right. That's, a, that's, that's one of the key features That's of a really good fat. point. So people are like, well, well, why did anyone ever even care about, about getting an alternate source of, of spread mm -hmm. to butter. Well, so the story is in, the, in 1869, Napoleon III had mm -hmm. a contest and said to a bunch of scientists, listen, we need someone to make like a butter-like spread that's a little bit cheaper that we can give to the poor people and that is shelf stable to the soldiers. Mm -hmm. um, so what they used actually initially was beef tallow mm -hmm. with some skim milk. So it wasn't really like our mm -hmm. normal it's margarines nowadays. Margarine now. No, so it was still animal-based product, but some guy won it, this French guy. And then later on in like the early 1900s, that's when they went, okay, well, let's start using some vegetable oils. Yeah, let's get fancy with our margarine. Right, but, but the trouble with the vegetable oils, the vegetable oils are liquid at room temperature. Fall all over your bread, fall on the floor, <laughs> you slip on it, now you got a broken hip. It's not good. So this is what's cool about science. So a bunch of food scientists then yeah. went, okay, well, what, what can we do to make this liquid oil into a thick spread that's kind of like butter, but we can use more readily available and cheaper plants. And other than reduce room temperature to an uncomfortable state. Right, so what, what they did is they um, messed with the chemistry a little bit so that one of the bonds, one of the mm -hmm. double bonds, rather mm -hmm. than being in its cis form, flipped to what's called a trans form. Mm -hmm. And this is what created trans fats. So trans fats are what allowed to be solid at room temperature. Right, and then we discovered that trans fats were very, very, very bad for you. Which is very unfortunate. It's like, like kind of a lot of things in life, right? You're like, yeah. hey, look at this cool invention. It works amazing. Hey, look at this smoking. It's so fun. There's tobacco yeah. and you get to light it up and you blow, you blow some smoke out of your mouth and like, yeah. oh, cancer. Yeah. Yeah. So, so trans fats, yes, yeah, very bad for you. So they they raise your LDL, they lower your HDL, they increase your inflammation. To they the kill point, you. They kill you. <laughs> like kind of like okay. that video Sum that we did up. the other day with all the things in your house. Yeah. So trans fats became like illegal pretty much. You right. just can't so, make trans fats and put it in food anymore. Right, mostly banned in advanced countries and they can do really, really small amounts I think are still allowed, but generally speaking, trans fats are, are gone. Yeah, we made trans fats illegal, we made marijuana legal. Right, right. Funny old world. Right, so then what food scientists said, okay, well, how can we make this liquid into a solid? And they did it a couple different ways. So they've used some blends. Mm -hmm. So blending it with things like palm oil and coconut oil that actually have saturated fat in them. So they mm -hmm. have their own health issues. We've mm -hmm. talked about how saturated fat's not good for you. Um, and then they've also done something called interesterification. So they've, again, altered the chemical bonds of the oil to make it solid. Now, because you uttered palm oil and yes. because palm oil is in margarine, yes. People are going to be typing right now, palm oil is wrecking our earth yes. right? because of deforestation that occurs, because of these palm fields that people are growing uh, in Malaysia, Indonesia, those places. Sure. It's destroying rainforests, sure. displacing indigenous people, it's leading yeah. to global warming. You, you, a, you could also argue the same thing for cattle though. Mm -hmm. Like in yeah. Brazil, they've clear cut the Amazon right. to grow cows. So it's our 
it's our human consumption of everything, yeah. I would say, that's doing that. But yes, palm oil is part of the trouble. Palm has sure. one of those bad raps with bad the rap. environment. We recognize that. Right, so the whole goal is essentially to get away from saturated fat. And, and back to before, we, we said saturated fat has been directly linked to elevated LDL and cardiovascular disease to the point where there is a Cochrane review that said swapping out saturated fats for polyunsaturated fats, this was in 2020, improves your cardiovascular health. What does Tom Cochrane know about all this stuff? Tom Cochrane, Canada. Canada proud, Tom Cochrane, a red rider. Look that up if you've never heard of him. It's pretty good. But no, the Cochrane review is an unbiased, non-industry funded, database that actually looks at high quality peer-reviewed randomized controlled trials and then pools all the data to come with a consensus hey we can't say good or bad or hey we can say that this is good or hey we can say this is bad when it came to saturated fat they said swapping out saturated fat for for polyunsaturated fat is good for your heart okay on the polyunsaturated fat yeah. in comes margarine right yes which as you said now is mostly mostly plant-based but there yes. are still some animal components and some margarines i think uh, yeah. Seen, you know, and, yeah, I think it's less good. common, but yes, for there sure. There are some. Um, and it is an unsaturated fat. And rather than using trans fats to make it solid at room temperature, they've come up with other ways to do it. Yep. Uh, so it is solid. However, it is highly processed, right? It is highly processed, for sure. I mean, everything's processed, right? Even yeah. churning the cream to make butter, you're processing in some way, but right. you're not really adding a lot of other stuff other than salt and some butters. Right. But margarine is highly processed. So those people that would poo poo, Margarine, yes, would say, "Oh, well, it's a very processed food." Sure, because there's some other chemicals in there too. I would say the other thing that has been kind of more in the media recently is the whoa, seed oils and and plant-based oils have too many omega sixes and not, not enough, enough omega threes. So this is causing inflammation. So what I would say is um, they they've looked into this very deeply, and this has mostly been debunked. So yes, the ratio to omega six to omega three is is greater in a lot of these seed oils. Having said that, omega-6 itself does not cause inflammation, but most people do not get enough omega-3, so we should work to try to increase our omega-3 content, but not to the point where you're saying, get rid of all these seed oils because omega-6 is bad. It's not really like that. Saturated fat is bad, yes. The omega-6, omega-3 thing is more of a nuancey kind of thing. Okay, so that's butter, that's margarine. Right. Is so butter better? So... Betty? <laughs> Brad, is butter better? That's an alliteration. So what I would say is, First of all, both of them are very calorically dense, like 100 calories per tablespoon. Both of them are pure fat. So these should be used in a very limited fashion, regardless of which one you choose, regardless of your thoughts about animals, plants, whatever. Mm -hmm. It's pure fat. Right, so if you're thinking of using either of these yeah. sparingly, right? Friendly. Thin layer on your bread. Don't take your bread and dip it in the tub of margarine or no. the stick of butter. Yeah, or you think of the like people that go to like a lobster fest. Mm, when you have that. Oh, there's nothing better than yeah, the lobster in and pure melted. butter, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah pure butter. So good. But you could dip like a shoe in pure butter; it still <laughs> tastes good. Right? Yeah. No, not knocking lobster. I like lobster. No, I'm just saying. So what I would say is that I, I think because of the saturated fat issue, which some people will say, oh, it's not really an issue. Saturated fat's not really a problem. It's been exaggerated. I think the evidence is there that saturated fat is bad for you. Um, has more saturated fat. So if, if I had to pick, I'd say probably margarine is healthier. However, I'd say both are not healthy. Right. Is that fair to say? Yeah, I think I think they're both not super healthy, but yeah. I, I, I would agree that, I, now, it's not one shoe fits all kind of scenario, no. right? Okay, so the, the, the other thing about saturated fat is if you eat a lot of saturated fat, it will raise your cholesterol, right? Yeah. We've made a video about how that works and encourages your liver to make more cholesterol. So if you're the type of person whose blood work is like rock solid, doesn't matter what you eat, your cholesterol doesn't go up, Maybe, Maybe the butter's mean, not, you know, that's okay that's for you to do. But other yeah. people, say you've had a heart attack in the past or a stroke, you have high cholesterol, or you've been struggling trying to lower yeah. your cholesterol, and you believe that cholesterol is correlated to these bad outcomes, then butter's gonna be difficult for you to consume, and sure. you don't wanna consider the margarine. You might get the benefits of swapping it out. Yeah, yeah. What, what do you have at home? Plant-based margarine. Plant-based yeah. margarine, yeah. I don't so eat a ton of it though. Like no, really but little. you must cook a little bit if you yeah. bake, don't you yeah. bake? Yeah, I don't bake, I don't bake you a must lot. Bake. I don't bake a lot. And where do your cookies come from? I, don't eat, I honestly don't. You need a cookie. No, I would. I would eat a cookie. We just don't have a lot of cookies in the house. Because you're not baking. Yeah. <laughs> the chicken or egg situation here. That's another video. Yeah. So, and personally, my choice is margarine yeah. over butter. Yeah. Uh, at, in my house, Very but in my family, same. from my kids and my wife, prefer butter over margarine. So. Sure. 
mostly just mine. There, there you go. So now, now you know. You know what I mean? Make a choice for yourself. Like all of our videos, we say this every time. We're not trying to get you to eat butter, not eat butter, margarine, whatever. It doesn't, doesn't really matter to us. We just want to present the facts so you can make an educated decision for yourself and your family and, and just be happy about it. Yeah, and pick the margarine. Now you know. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe to our channel. And remember, you are in charge of your own health and you're in charge of what spread you put on your bread. We'll see you next time.